and welcome to The Conversation, a show that aims to spotlight and share the experiences of women of color creators. My guest today is Sam Yushiro. Sam creates retro style DIY content with a modern twist and is the woman behind the creative lifestyle blog, Aw Sam. I would love to hear in your own words a bit about your story and how you came to where you are today. Yeah, so I've always kind of been blogging on the internet, I guess. Like I had um, a website that was a blog in high school, so like 2008-ish, yeah. where I was just posting a bunch of fashion photos. Um, and then in college, I started kind of exploring more of like what this brand would be. I went to school for industrial design. So we did, um, it was technically product design. We did a lot of furniture design and I kind of wanted to push the boundaries of what product design was. And for my final project in school, I basically like went through and did the whole branding thing, like what my name would be. Um, that's when I was doing more of donut stuff and kind of <laughs> like, I, I did a donut book it wasn't something that ever was published or anything, but it was, I basically just did like, okay, there are, here are some like strawberry donuts or some pineapple donuts. And so they looked like those things. So I wanted to, I kind of went down my own path of like what I was interested in and started posting all these things online. People were asking like, what's the recipe? How do I make these? So from there, I kind of went into like, okay, I'm gonna start this website. Um, I'm going to post the recipes and DIY steps there and I got my first paid job and I was like, okay, I didn't know that you could get <laughs> paid for this. And did you end up after getting that first paid job deciding to pursue it full time or what was the progression of that first job leading into to doing this work? Yeah, so the first job I got was during college still and then kind of after college I had um, a job doing 3D modeling. Oh, and, uh, that's cool. Yeah. It's very different. Yeah, very different. Um, Donuts, we modeled same thing. It went along definitely with what I was doing in college, but not like what I'm doing now yeah. um, at all. But I was like, okay, I'm graduating college. I can continue doing jobs, you know, like within the field that I studied and then potentially go full time later. Or like this is an opportunity for me to kind of like experiment and try this out. I always have seen other people that have pursued careers in social media kind of wait until like if their job in social media gets past like what they're making as a salary you know then they decide like i'm going to take the leap full time but it's hard to do that when you have a full-time job it's hard to put in that same commitment to having a job as a creator um, and being able to actually get to that point where you're making more than your salary when you can't devote full time <laughs> to two things. So now I'd like to bring it back to your work. When you look at your content, it's very unique and colorful and upbeat. And I'd love to hear what inspires you or how you spark creativity within yourself to, to create that kind of work. Yeah, I think I look outside of what I do and like look at other things that are creative, like films, um you know like graphic novels stuff that i think like is you can gather stuff from or inspiration from but it's not like directly related you know to what i'm doing and i think that's where i find the most inspiration and you know like surrealist art is is always a great place to find inspiration or surrealist film like a lot of what i do is in a way like surrealist yeah. so when i see your work it's so meticulous and detailed and i wonder if like when you first started you actually had a knack for it or you you feel like your craft has evolved over time it's definitely evolved over time i think like the skills that i learned in college um were definitely things that have played a role in like the way i think about things now like we learned about materials and what you can different ways you can manipulate materials or the different, I guess, like processes that you can put materials through. So that stuff was helpful and something I learned and I'm continuing to learn as I learn about new materials and um, new ways of making things, even with baking, like, because it's yeah. such a science, like, really figuring, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, figuring yeah. out, like, so you know, what can I do to, to really, like, take this and push it into another level. So bringing it back to your colorful palette, is there a why behind like the brightness of it? Is there like a connection to you wanting to create a like positive 
uplifting content or is it just the mere fact that like color does bring some levity to to different aspects of your work? I think a little bit of both. I think um, that's like the, the comment that I hear the most of like, yeah. you know, your feed is kind of a source for like if I need some happiness or like uplifting, like I come to look at your feed because it's always colorful and, and feels that way. And um, I think specifically like yellow, I love the yeah. color yellow and it just feels like happiness and sunshine. And um, so I think like a lot of a lot of different colors like evoke different things for me personally. And I think that's like a way for me to show and share it with other people as well. So one of the goals of this series is really to highlight and share the experiences of women of color creators. And I know that during the pandemic, uh, AAPI, so Asian American Pacific Islander, hate crimes rose by 1900%. And I know that you shared um, a really personal post regarding your family's history. So I wanted to bring that up and I'd love to hear more about why you wanted to share your story and what that post means to you. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, like my my grandparents were in Japanese internment camps and even growing up, like I grew up in suburban Michigan, um, we were only taught about it because my great aunt came to speak to our class about it. And it wasn't something that um, I feel like growing up and you know even going into college like a lot of people hadn't known that that was part of you know american history that happened in america so i think first off to just share you know this happened yeah. and this is something that has been happening and has continued to happen and has only gotten worse with the pandemic and i also think it's it's for myself like as somebody who's half japanese there are a lot of people that follow me that don't know that i'm japanese and I think like it was important to be like, you know, this is who I am as a person um, because of the Japanese internment camps as well. Like my family was very Americanized. A lot of like my my family members had like American names and didn't use their Japanese names. Um, and I think like trying to what I'm trying to do more of is kind of like bring back, you know, our Japanese heritage and um, embrace that again and even with the adversity still like trying to you know say like you know I'm not going to just act like I'm not Japanese and um, I think it's important I was also pregnant at the time when I posted this so my baby is a quarter Japanese and I want to make sure that like they know that they're Japanese and what that you know and, and know like this is what our heritage is like was there a part of you that was a bit hesitant to even do a post like this? Yeah, I was hesitant, I think, because like I've experienced racism, especially when I grew up in Michigan. And um, I never felt like, I guess I was allowed to talk about it. And I think that's because I'm half Japanese and I do present to a lot of people as white, um, but I've experienced a lot of racism. And so it felt like something that I wasn't allowed to talk about, I guess, or um, something that I shouldn't have a problem with because I do um, I do benefit from white privilege in a lot of ways because I do present white to some people. So I was hesitant in that. This was kind of the first time just talking about even like my heritage and like where my ancestors came from. So um, it was something very new to me. So that was very scary. <laughs> yeah, and it's very vulnerable. Um, and I'm, I think it's really beautiful that you decided to put your identity out there and share more of your family's history. May I ask how it was received by your followers, your audience? What was the, the feedback in regards to posts like that? Yeah, I think everybody was just kind of like, thanks for sharing, you know. Yeah. Um, we didn't, we had no idea about this or like, you know, some people that had no idea that Japanese internment camps existed, you know, then we chatted a little bit about that. Um, it was received great overall, I think. Like, yeah. I mean, I didn't have any negativity. It felt good to be able to share it too and for people to understand, you know, like this is who I am. I always grew up with those questions of like, what are you? Mm, which yeah. was the question that I always got. And I would be like, 
human maybe yeah human yeah like what i don't understand the question so yeah. you know and then it goes down to like well where are you from and i'm like michigan mm -hmm. so you know it's like it, the question that they're actually asking is a, a lot different than that but um yeah i think like i i still get those questions occasionally from people and i think to be able to just say like you know this is who i am this is like where my family was from you know it, it feels a lot different to, to be able to take control over that rather than like wait for people to be like what are you <laughs> yeah <laughs> human yeah. yeah no but i think it's it's really inspiring and empowering to be able to be like this is who i am this yeah. is how i'm showing up because i i can definitely relate to that so my final question is what message or advice would you give to other girls or women of color creators who are considering becoming a content creator yeah i think um the message that i would give would be that the internet is such a large place and especially when you're sharing your work it's it's a really vulnerable place to put your work out is on the internet and there will be people that will support you there will be people that will be there for you and um cheer you on even if you know you've done something that you think is small so well thank you for joining the show can you share how people can find you yeah, thank you for yeah. having me. Yeah. yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at um, awe.sam or find me on awesam.com. Amazing. Thank you for watching the conversation. I hope you like this video. And if you do, we have so much more to watch for you here and here. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.